Welcome to Millennium News Hour. I am Tanzeeb Anaurin. In today's bulletin, we will present top and trending news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines of the day. Donald Trump wins Iowa caucuses. Donald Trump scowls as jury is picked to decide how much he owes for denying sex assault. Entrepreneur Ramaswamy drops out of White House race, endorses Trump. Asa Hutchinson drops out of the 2024 presidential race. Nikki Haley says she won't debate Ron DeSantis in New Hampshire unless Donald Trump participates. Senator Bob Menendez and a wife seek separate trials on bribery charges. U.S. will sustain support for Ukraine. U.S. flight delays and cancellations stall travelers nationwide as a winter storm drags on. Succession succeeds the beer eat setup in 75th Emmy Awards. About 1,000 tourists trapped in China's Xinjiang after avalanches. Korean airplane strikes Cathay aircraft in Japan. Macy ages Holland and Bonmati complete sweep at FIFA Awards. And Nadal named Saudi Tennis Federation Ambassador. You are listening to Headlines Now News in detail. Donald Trump secured a resounding win in the first 2024 Republican presidential contest in Iowa on Monday, asserting his command over the party despite facing scores of criminal charges as he seeks an election rematch with President Joe Biden. Trump took over half the votes, propelling him towards what looks said to be a close and deeply acrimonious election campaign against Biden, a Democrat, in November. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis finished well behind Trump in second place in Iowa, aging out former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley as the both failed to emerge as the chief opponent. Trump, the only current or ex-U.S. president to be charged with criminal activity, won by an unprecedented margin for an Iowa Republican contest, strengthening his case that his nomination is a foregone conclusion given his massive lead in national polls. Trump garnered 51 percent, DeSantis 21 percent, and Haley 19 percent, with 99 percent of the expected vote tallied, according to Edison Research. Thank you, Iowa. I love you all, Trump wrote on his social media platform, Truth Social. Donald Trump shook his head in disgust Tuesday as the judge in his New York defamation trial told prospective jurors that another jury had already decided the former president sexually abused columnist E. Jean Carroll in the 1990s. Fresh from a political win Monday in the Iowa caucuses, the Republican presidential frontrunner detoured to a Manhattan courtroom for what amounts to the penalty phase of a civil defamation lawsuit stemming from Carol's claims he sexually attacked her in a department store dressing room. Nine jurors were selected for the trial, which Judge Louis A. Kaplan said is likely to last three to five days. Opening statements come next. Testimony will begin Wednesday. 
Trump did not attend the previous trial in the case last May when a jury found he had sexually abused Carol and awarded her $5 million in damages. In light of that verdict, Kaplan told prospective jurors the trial beginning Tuesday would focus only on how much money, if any, Trump must pay Carol for comments he made about her while president in 2019. For purposes of the new trial, it had already been determined that Trump did sexually assault Miss Carol, Kaplan said, prompting Trump to shake his head from side to side. The ex-president was sitting at the defense table, flanked by his lawyers about a dozen feet from Carol and her legal team. They didn't appear to speak or make eye contact. Vivek Ramaswamy, a multimillionaire former biotech executive, ended his White House bid on Monday and endorsed Donald Trump after his long shot bid caught attention but failed to catapult him high enough in the Republican Party's first nominating contest in Iowa. Ramaswamy, a 38-year-old born in Ohio to immigrant parents from southern India, was one of the surprises of the 2024 Republican race dominated by former President Trump. A fierce defender of Trump throughout the campaign, Ramaswamy likely secured himself a spot in Republican politics going forward with his youthful demeanor, deep pockets and fast-talking, pugnacious campaigning. However, Trump turned on him in the final days leading up to the Iowa caucus, calling him a fraud and asserting that a vote for Ramaswamy was a vote for the other side. Partial results for the Iowa caucus showed Ramaswamy coming in fourth with around 7.7% of votes. Former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson announced Tuesday that he is suspending his campaign for the Republican presidential nomination, dropping out after failing to register in the Iowa caucuses. Hutchinson notched 0.2% of the vote in Monday's caucuses, finishing a distant sixth after an anti-Trump campaign that did not gain traction for the veteran Republican in the new GOP. My message of being a principled Republican with experience and telling the truth about the current frontrunner did not sell in Iowa, Hutchinson said in a statement, I stand by the campaign I ran. Hutchinson spent much of his campaign on the ground in Iowa and New Hampshire, where he was a vocal critic of Trump, even suggesting that the former president might be disqualified from running in 2024 under the 14th Amendment to the Constitution which has a provision barring candidates who have engaged in insurrection. Nikki Haley said Tuesday that she wouldn't participate in the next Republican presidential debate unless former President Donald Trump takes part in it, leaving Florida Governor Ron DeSantis as the only candidate committed to Thursday's event. We have had five great debates in this campaign. Kelly said in a statement, released as she campaigned in New Hampshire. Unfortunately, Donald Trump has ducked all of them. He has nowhere left to hide. The next debate I do will either be with Donald Trump or with Joe Biden. I look forward to it. Her statement was released a day after the all-important Iowa caucuses in which Trump marked a wide margin of victory over both Haley and DeSantis. With the two locked in a heated competition for second place in Iowa, Haley tried to make her electoral argument more about Trump than DeSantis, repeatedly echoing her refrain that her candidacy marks a turnabout from the chaos that follows the GOP frontrunner. The move also could be a result of the last debate which featured only Haley and DeSantis, in which Haley didn't perform as well as expected and DeSantis ultimately ended up beating her for second place in Iowa. Senator Bob Menendez and his wife are seeking separate trials on bribery charges they each face in a New York court. The New Jersey Democrat and his wife Nadine were each charged in the fall with aiding three New Jersey businessmen in return for cash, gold bars, and a luxury car. The couple and the businessmen who also face charges have all pleaded not guilty. Nadine Menendez's lawyers asked in papers 
filed late Monday for the severance on the grounds that the senator may want to testify at a trial scheduled to start in May and may divulge marital communications that she plans to keep secret. Lawyers for Bob Menendez wrote that each spouse should face separate trials so that the senator does not provide information about marital communications during cross-examination that might be damaging to his wife's defense. They asked the trial judge not to force him to choose between two fundamental rights, his right to testify in his own defense and his right not to testify against his spouse. The requests for separate trials were made as part of several pre-trial submissions late Monday by lawyers for defendants in the case. Secretary of State Antony Blinken promised sustained U.S. support for Ukraine in a meeting with President Vladimir Zelensky, despite a row in the U.S. Congress on approving new funding. We are determined to sustain our support for Ukraine and we are working very closely with Congress in order to work to do that. I know our European colleagues will do the same thing, Blinken told Zelensky as they met at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Jake Sullivan, President Joe Biden's national security advisor, joined the meeting and told Zelensky that the United States and its allies were determined to ensure that Russia fails and Ukraine wins. Zelensky thanked Biden administration and the bipartisan support in U.S. Congress. You mentioned about Congress. We really count on your support, Zelensky said. He pointed to the U.S.-made patriot system that has helped Ukraine shoot down barrages of Russian missiles. More than 1,800 flights within to or out of the United States were cancelled Tuesday as extreme winter weather continued to wreak havoc for travelers. Data from the tracking group FlightAware also showed more than 4,700 U.S. flights were delayed as of Tuesday afternoon. Southwest Airlines saw the most cancellations at 391, FlightAware data showed. United was next with 338, Sky West, Indiana-based Republic and American Airlines also each had more than 100 flights cancelled. Airport across the U.S. saw travelers stranded with New York, LaGuardia, Washington Regan International and O'Hare International airports leading the way. The weather-related cancellations come on top of pre-announced ones by Alaska Airlines, which said Friday that dozens of flights would remain cancelled through Tuesday as a result of the ongoing investigation into Boeing's 737 MAX 9 aircraft. As a result, Alaska had the, had the highest rate of cancellations Tuesday, with 16 percent or 96 total, flight hour data showed. After a four-month delay due to the Hollywood strikes, the 75th Primetime Emmy Awards returned Monday with Anthony Anderson as host. The ceremony, which aired on Fox, honored shows that aired from June 1, 2022 to May 31, 2023. HBO's succession, Fox's The Beer and Netflix's Beef were among the biggest winners of the night. Succession had a fittingly successful send-off at the Emmys, the addictive saga of the roiling Roy family dynasty winning Best Drama for a third time and five more awards, including three top acting prizes. But Succession was not the only show to make a ludicrously capacious haul. The beer had a bearish night indeed, fully dominating the comedy category in its first season, winning the top prize and three acting awards. And the chaotic, darkly humorous Beef was the other big victor, winning Best Limited Series with leads Steven Yeun and Ali Wong becoming the first Asian Americans to win in their categories. Also making history, Star Quinta Bronson of Abbott Elementary, the first black winner in her category since 1981. It was not a night of upsets with most predictions holding. But it was not without pleasant surprises, including a series of cast reunions of beloved shows, some more effective than others, like The Sopranos, Cheers, Grey's Anatomy, L.A. McBeal, and more. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. 
world continuously revolving around various events every minute every second something is happening somewhere around the globe and you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment here we come millennium news hour to get you connected with top usa and international trending news which includes local news political news world news business news health and science related news entertainment news sports news and so on millennium news 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at tv such as sony samsung lg roku tv amazon tv and apple tv and also in all european countries and australia available with sky network worldwide jadu tv radiant ip tv worldwide jago bd network and horizon satellite globally stay connected with millennium news hour to get the world news on your fist welcome back to millennium news hour now it's time for global updates Around 1,000 tourists remain stranded in a remote holiday village after avalanches hit China's northwestern Xinjiang region with snow and fickle weather impeding evacuation, State TV reported on Tuesday. Road access to Himo village, a scenic destination near the borders of Kazakhstan, Russia and Mongolia where the tourists were trapped, has been cut off by avalanches for several days now. The village is situated in Xinjiang's Altai prefecture where continuous snowfall in some areas has lasted 10 days, it said. The heavy snowfall set off dozens of avalanches along large sections of highways in the Altai mountains leading to the Kana's scenic area, and some tourists were lifted by helicopter to safety, Chinese state media outlets reported over the weekend. Snow brought by the avalanches reaches as high as about 23 feet in some parts and in many was higher than snow clearing equipment, CCTV said. A Korean air airliner struck an empty Cathay Pacific plane while taxiing at a snow hit Japanese airport, with both airlines saying there were no injuries. The incident at New Chetasi Airport serving Sapporo came two weeks after a near catastrophic collision at Tokyo's Haneda Airport between a Japan Airlines airliner and a smaller Coast Guard plane. Our aircraft, which was stationary at the time with no customers nor crew on board, was struck by a Korean Air A330 which was taxiing past, Cathay Pacific said in a statement. Korean Air also confirmed there were no injuries among the 276 passengers and 13 crew on board its Airbus A330-300 that had been set to depart for Seoul Incheon from New Chetasi on the northern Japanese island of Hokkaido. The airline said its plane came into contact with the Cathay aircraft at 5.35 p.m. Japanese time during pushback when the third-party ground handler vehicle slipped due to heavy snow. Now it's time for business news. Today's New York stock close price is 16,799.54. The NYSE composite is increased by 18.42 points or 0.11%. Tokyo stock close price is 35,619.18. The Nikkei 225 index is decreased by 282.61 points or 0.79%. Shanghai stock close price is 2,893.99. The Shanghai index is increased by 7.70 points or 0.27%. Hong Kong stock close price is 15,865.92. The Hang Seng index is decreased by 350.41 points or 2.16%.
Bombay stock closed price is 73,128.77. The Sensex index is decreased by 199.17 points or 0.27%. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe. And you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news, which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science related news, entertainment news, sports news, and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia, available with Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network, and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your fist. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. Now let's have a look on today's sports stories. Lionel Messi was crowned as the best men's player for 2023, while Athena Bonmati added to her collection of individual accolades by winning the Women's Award at FIFA's award ceremony in London. Messi retained the award on Monday night by beating Manchester City's treble-winning Norwegian striker Erling Haaland in a tie-break as France's Paris Saint-Germain forward Kylian Mbappe finished third. The 36-year-old was a surprise victor ahead of Holland, as the award covered only the period after Messi had led Argentina to World Cup glory in December 2022 to August 2023. During that time, the 8-time Ballon d'Or winner had a subdued end to his career at Paris Saint-Germain, despite winning the Ligue 1 title, before joining MLS side Inter Miami in June. While Messi quickly made his mark in the United States as he helped the franchise to their first trophy by winning the League's Cup in August, Holland was the favorite to win after scoring 52 goals in his debut season with City as the English side won a treble of Champions League, Premier League and FA Cup. Rafael Nadal said there is real potential to grow the sport of tennis in Saudi Arabia. After the 22 times Grand Slam champion was named an ambassador for the Saudi Tennis Federation. The role will see the former world number one spend time each year in the Desert Kingdom to help train children and grow interest in the sport. With plans also in the pipeline for a training academy, the Saudi Federation said. Everywhere you look in Saudi Arabia, you can see growth and progress and I am excited to be part of that. Nadal, who pulled out of the ongoing Australian Open with a muscle injury, said in a statement. The Spaniard, who recently visited a junior tennis clinic in Riyadh, struggled with a hip problem last year before making his comeback in Brisbane but expects 2024 to be his final season on the professional tour. Let's have a look on today's weather forecast.
Before finishing today's news, let's hear out the headlines again. Donald Trump wins Iowa caucuses. Donald Trump scowls as jury is picked to decide how much he owes for denying sex assault. Entrepreneur Ramaswamy drops out of White House race, endorses Trump. Asa Hutchinson drops out of the 2024 presidential race. Nikki Haley says she won't debate Ron DeSantis in New Hampshire unless Donald Trump participates. Senator Bob Menendez and wife seek separate trials on bribery charges. U.S. will sustain support for Ukraine. U.S. flight delays and cancellations stall travelers nationwide as a winter storm drags on. Succession succeeds the beer eight set up in 75th Emmy Awards. About 1,000 tourists trapped in China's Xinjiang after avalanches. Korean airplane strikes Cathay aircraft in Japan. Macy ages Holland and Bonmati complete sweep at FIFA Awards. And Nadal named Saudi Tennis Federation ambassador. That's all for today. Keep watching Millennium News Hour for latest news update. To stay updated, like our Facebook page, subscribe our YouTube channel, and visit our website. Our website address is www.millenniumnews24.com. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radio and IP TV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all the latest news worldwide. Thank you.